Sachidanand, Sally Perry, is of Cherokee lineage and initiated as Swami Sachidanand. Is an, she's an internationally known visionary, spirit healer, teacher, and author of Chronicles of a Healer, She Who's Dances. So, Swami Swandanand was initiated um, by um, Yug Parusha Swami Paramanji, who was internationally recognized as a Hindu healer and created the East West Bridge Organization. An ordained minister of the Fellowship of the Inner Light, Reverend Perry was an official observer as the 2000 World Millennium Peace Summit at the United Nations and received the Hampton Roads of Virginia Outstanding Businesswoman of the Year Award. She has been very special in my life as a teacher, a healer, and a dear friend. And I'm very grateful that she could come today to share with us. Swami Satyajanan, let's give her a warm welcome. In 85, I had my first vision quest with Painted Era. He was preparing for the Sundance, so the sweat lodge afterwards was extremely hot. Like on your knees, feel like your hide's coming off. I come out of the sweat lodge with him and four guys that he was uh, preparing into the La Plata River. And I said, if I'm to be connected by this work, let it be by a rainbow. Let the rainbow go around the world. And I heard one of the guys up on the hill there say, Sally, get up and come on out of the river. And to me, what I heard was, oh, 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 oh rainbow. I said, did you say rainbow? He said, yes. I said, I just prayed for one. He said, there's a double one. Get up. Then I heard, you now have eternal life. Now, I had heard that in my Baptist upbringing, but Lord knows I never believed anybody would burn in hell forever, or did we live in heaven forever? So, they said, take a stone out of the river for your left side, a stone for your right, for balance, for the world. And I come on out, and it was 11 years before I found out what eternal life was all about. It took me that long to integrate and I say that because most of us run through life and we're like iced tea with too much sugar at the bottom. We're saying the right words, but we're not giving the right energy. It's about energy, just energy. Since I was three years old, I could see words coming out of people's mouth and I would know if they were lying or not. I tug on mother's shirt when she's trying to buy something. No, that's too much money, mama. They're lying. Yeah. So my life has been about energy. Always energy. The thought is four volts of electricity. What you speak is 10 times stronger. What you write is 50 times stronger. That's why forgiveness work followed me for four years. And I give that a foundation in my teachings because it opened my heart, the higher heart that serves the higher chakras. The lower heart serves the lower chakras. And all my work with Alex Orbita, Painted Era, Paul Solom. God bless you, Paul. I love you. I love the God consciousness in him because he's with us. 
he knows and knew and I know and know and know and know that I'm not the body. I'm not my job. I'm not my house. I'm not my car. Within me dwells the universal energy and in each one of us it dwells. May take us millions of years to realize it, but it's there. If you want to read more, get the lives and teachings of the Masters of the Far East by Baird Spaulding. Wonderful. I, to this day, teach from those books and required when I went to India, everybody read them and get out of ego. Wayne Dyer said, ego is edging God out. So I remember here at the church on my 80th birthday, people come down to do a puja from New York. And he starts and the place is filled up. And people that's known me for 50 years sitting here. And he's only known me about 28 years. And he goes, I want to tell all of y'all <laughs> that I know her. <laughs> probably a lot longer than you. And I turned around and I said, Rick, there's people that know me for 50 years. This told me how evolved he was and how hard he was working. Thank you, Swami. He goes, I'm still working on my ego. So sometimes when you think too grand you're getting, see if your edging got out. Yeah. And I want to praise God for bringing me here after I went to Unity. Richard Fitz kept saying, you need to go here. And I'd met Painted Era, and I wanted something that would mesh with the Native American, which I am part of. And so... At Unity, I had a vision. Jesus was in my heart, had it for a week, and the light started coming out of my hands and scared me to death. I'm trying to shake it off, you know. That was the beginning of my hands-on healing work. And I had Kundalini, which took 12 years. And Jody, you once said to me, Joey Lytle once said to me, why didn't I, like in my book, mention her? Because she did help me. One day she come in to have her hair cut and fixed. And I had had about a week of kundalini where a knot had come on my head. I had a guy that walked all over India come to the door when I'm at home and said, Spirit sent him. He need to work on me. And Jody, when I told her, Joey, I don't know why I want to call you Jody. Joey said, let me work on you, and then you can fix my hair. And I had such a headache, I was glad. I'm acknowledging you now between all the work you've done. Please acknowledge yourself and love yourself more. Okay, yeah, but I just wanted to do that. I sat there and thought of her words, and I thought I've got to work it in. Okay, the waking, dreaming, deep sleep, and Turya, which is pure consciousness. So waking, we know, and that's where we have to do our work, is waking, and when I started working with Alex Orbita, the psychic surgeon, it was like everybody wanted to have an out-of-body experience, and they needed an in-body experience. So I learned that during that 10 years, working in my waking, dreaming. I then kept my dreams for five years, and my dream body woke up. And I didn't know if I dreamed it or if it happened. And then it turned into vision, waking visions. And my 
in 87 on the, uh, the reservation dance, the first world peace dance, I broke into higher mind and my mind was clear. It's like the sky. And it used to be like a thousand runaway horses. So it can be done. I attribute the dances. I attribute writing for four years, my forgiveness work, and the medicine wheel teachings that help me. In India, the dream is not given too much uh, work like we have here. I'm glad I did it. And when I knew that Swami approved of it, he said that he once dreamed an elephant stepped on him. And his guru told him, you're very lucky it happened in dreams so you could live. So I said, well, I'm glad I did it for five years and got rid of so much of that stuff. Yeah. And you're waking and dreaming in the teaching. Uh, you do edge God out because we're so involved in who we are and what we need to do for us and whatever. We forget that we're not the body, not our home, not our car, not our kids. Everything we attach to holds us back. And to integrate that more in to the deep sleep state, we go to the teaching on the intellect. And Swami once gave a wonderful talk, somebody asking the difference in the mind and the intellect. He said, I'll say it like this. Suppose you have really high blood sugar and you're having to be very careful. And you're at a dinner and there's the most delicious looking chocolate cake. And your mindset, your desire body says, I want a piece of that. And your intellect says, oh, no, you shouldn't have that. It's not good for you. So it, then you learn to listen to your intellect because that is a higher level of opening up consciousness is working with the intellect. It's a higher part. And usually when people are uh, talking about the God self or the higher mind, they're working a lot with the intellect. It's one of the later things of accomplishment uh, in getting in to the formless consciousness, which is Turiya. I remember the gentleman, Bob Keaton, that recorded, he recorded here for me, he recorded, recorded for Swami in Colorado and all around. And he said to me once, Sally, do you know what you're doing? I said, what do you mean, Bob? He said, there's not lots of us that want to have formless consciousness. We enjoy this body too much. So it takes millions of lifetimes to have your kundalini completed to really know that God lives in every cell of your body. And that is love. And that's one without the other. Pure, absolute, pure consciousness cannot be I am or I did this because pure consciousness is getting also rid of the intellect. So uh, in that deep sleep, we're working a lot on that because 
you're working a lot on uh, I am this and I am that. And that goes with the awakening or the awake part of our life and the dream part of our life. So in the deep sleep, we're doing a lot of work there because to get to Turiya, there's two levels. Once you've gone through the others and in your deep sleep, you're working with the subconscious mind, which will do it for you. And Ravi McCamela had said to me at the place when I said, I hope I can get Turiya across for these, this lecture. And he said, everything you've said to me is what Sai Baba says. Watch your what you're feeding to the subconscious, your likes and dislikes. Watch what you feed to your subconscious, your likes and dislikes. Yeah. Because... If you do the same thing, 21 days, it'll go in the subconscious and your subconscious will do it for you. And in those masteries of the Far East, they explicitly talk about the subconscious and it's the only place we have free will. And I used to argue with Painted Era. He said, Sally, everything is destined. I said, no, no, I have free will. <laughs> and that went on for about two years. Finally, he looked at me one day and he goes, <laughs> free, free will is how you use your, uh, how you deal with your destiny. Free will is how you deal with your destiny. Yeah, and free will can only be used in your subconscious mind. So that was a real big thing for me and still teaching my students now. Have you gone back to book five, chapter four of the Masters of the Far East? It tells you your subconscious doesn't know right or wrong good or bad. Yes. So if you judge yourself or others, you disconnect from that light that's in all your cells there wanting to wake up. You disconnect. You connect to what you judge. So you disconnect from the God within you because God doesn't judge. And it talks very plainly about the subconscious. So that's book five, chapter four, which I'm now teaching out of and have been for 10 years to people ready to move on into God consciousness, really do the work. So once, I mean, awareness is one of the ultimate gifts you could give yourself, aware of yourself what you think, what comes out of your mouth, and what you do. All of it. Awareness. The gift of the eagle, which God has given me. And I know the story of the eagle. Castanetti's talked about it. The eagle eats your awareness when you die, unless you're aware. And if you stay aware, you can go through the eye of the eagle and bring your awareness back in. Yes. Awareness. Awareness. So when you get to the fourth level of consciousness, Turiya, the reason there's two parts to it is the fact that you're aware, and that's good, that you're aware, but you're still connected to the waking, dreaming, deep sleep. It's awareness of Turiya, but it's not the complete 
pure consciousness or the absolute that the saints in India talk about. Shankasharya, Adi Shankasharya, I could even hardly pronounce his name when I found out that I was supposed to have worked with him. You know, it was told to me 40 or 50 years ago. He is and was the first teacher of true oneness, one without the other. Now, in India, some parts broke off from him, you know, and then all of a sudden, gods came to help us on earth. There is a saying that there's five on the planet all the time, higher gods and ten lower gods. Yes. And I remember with Alex working one time, I always uh, worked with him a couple of times a month for 10 years. And then even in India, I would fly to the Philippines uh, when he had certain things. And somebody asked him, are you an enlightened master? And Alex Orbito, the psychic surgeon Shirley MacLaine wrote about, said, I'm far from an enlightened master. He said, but I'm a master at what I do. Now, Sally lives in India with real masters. Yeah. And I always was thinking, how can I see all that he does that I don't want to judge him not being in the light because he's certainly doing a lot of great healing around the world. But in a minute, he explained it. I am a master at what I do. At least he knew that, but that he wasn't an enlightened master. So the second part of Turiya is total enlightenment. It's formless consciousness. It's one without the other. Remember, I said the first part was awareness. It doesn't have awareness. It just is. And the Bible says, be still and know that. And that means Projetni of God. And in India, Projetni of God means child of God. And that's when I realized that. And I'll say a neat story. One of my students, and still does, and ties to the organization I have that still takes the children off the streets in India. She had a daughter at 10 that had a rare brain, like five people in the world. And as she progressed, you know, she got worse and uh, had to put her in a home. But she'd bring her out to see me at my center and I'd get crayons and color book and little cheap jewelry and she loved to play. So one day she was meeting me for lunch. And Susie said, I just visited her. I want to call her Amy, but that's not the name. Uh, anyhow, she said, okay, I'm going to go see Swami for lunch. What do you want me to tell her? And she looked at her. She said that. <laughs> and she waited a little bit longer. I'm going to go see Swami for lunch. What do you want me to tell her? I know you love her. She said that. So the third time, finally, she looked at her. She said, that, that, that. Well, don't you understand? And when she told me, I started laughing. I said, you don't know what that is, do you? It means that we're children of God. I've told you your daughter that seems to be so horribly handicapped with this brain stuff was a very evolved soul. And when she first come to me, I told her I didn't know what was going on. I said, you have to give your daughter to your husband. She was getting a divorce and he wanted to keep. I said, she has taken on the lineage karma for him. 
you know. So I've walked her through, and she died last year, like at 36 or something. Yeah. But Susie is very uh, enlightened now by all this, finally understanding. But in India, I met many people that I was called to work with that were enlightened masters coming to earth for a short period seemingly to be diseased or something wrong yes so the thing about formless consciousness when you are there out of that can manifest many things that you don't have to ask for because that consciousness knows what you need. And as the young lady before me said, all you have to do is ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find acceptance acknowledge acceptance and then allow it to come and so in closing I want to acknowledge Swami Paramanan for all the work he has done on the planet mainly in India, but he did come from 2000 at the UN to uh, two thousand fifteen, I believe it was, that he had a stroke. But uh, he's doing good. 2017 was the last time I went to India. And they call me and say, we miss you, we love you. But I told him I could not live there six months every year. He offered to build me a home. I said, my work is in America. Because I know I'm not this body. I know several lifetimes before this body, I was beat to death with a baby in me. I actually met the guy was my sponsor in the islands. He had already killed somebody in this life. Yeah. I met eight people at the Monroe Institute from Europe that had cut me up and killed me. Yeah. And um, I said to Karen, come in here. I said, uh, if people understood that every inch of their body has past life, and that's why somebody will go to the hospital and have a major surgery, and they're out in a week or two days, or another one's in for a month. It's opened up a past life in that area. Yeah. So all these surgeries I knew were coming sometime. I've had four <laughs> in five years. Two hip or one hip and two shoulders, and then I re some repair here six eight weeks ago. But see, it's because I know I'm not the body, but I know you die with your strongest thought, emotion, and your heart center. And I'm tired of carrying those things lifetime after lifetime. So I'm getting them out of this physical body, and when I leave. I'm not taking any of it with me. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Thank all of you. One last thing is namaste. If we all learned namaste and lived it, that's all we'd have to do. Because in America, they say it's recognition. But in India, it's the God in me honors the God in you. Or the God in me sees the God in you. 
And that came to me that I was going to begin it, but I'm ending it. That if everybody you see, you ask to see the God in you. Yes, thank you. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti.